What's up, YouTube? Welcome to today's video where we go over the top five builds in Sentinel League. Now, I was kind of surprised by what the number one skill was, and I think we all kind of are. And this skill really shows you how much content creators are able to influence people's choices. Now, as you can see, number one is Righteous Fire, then Seismic Trap, Summon Skeletons, Explosive Arrow, and Lightning Strike. And they're all pretty equally represented. Now, this is something to note. This is from PoE Ninja. So the way PoE Ninja works is it looks at like the top 15,000 players on the ladder. So there is going to be some bias, right? Because if a build is super glass cannon, then it'll probably show up lower. And if a build is super, super tanky with more people higher level, then of course they're going to show up higher, right? So maybe this is how we can explain some of the discrepancy. But I'm going to go over some of these builds real fast, look at what items they're using and see what we can draw. Any conclusions? And maybe I'll choose one of these builds to play as my second build. So first build we have is Righteous Fire. Now this build is actually very surprising. It's the number one build. I know it is very, very strong. It is nearly immortal if you use Aegis Aurora and you have Melting of the Flesh with 90 res. Now, I do think that this is the number one build because playstyle is everything. And Ziz did make a video about how this was the best mapping build in Sentinel League. And he's not really that wrong if you want a play style that literally requires no real buttons to press and you just walk around and everything dies around you. Your boss damage is not that bad and your character is super tanky, is nearly immortal once you get Aegis Aurora and you have 90 res everywhere. And it's just, the whole package is there, right? You know how people say he has the whole package? Wait, maybe that sounds weird, but basically everything is there, right? For this build to get it to insane levels. Now, because it is so defensive, you can get super high level on the build. There'll probably be a lot more people higher level leading to PoE Ninja finding more of those characters that are higher level and indexing them to give them more representation. So that's probably a little bit skewed. It's probably not as high as you think it is. Now, next up, they used Fire Trap for some extra single target damage. I don't know if they always used Fire Trap in the past, but I did see that Fire Trap was also on here. After looking into it, it actually uses both Fire Trap and Righteous Fire to get all the damage they need. Legacy of Fury, which is the Maven Boots, is actually a core item for this build you can see here. It is around 97% usage rate. Now, I actually dropped a few of these pairs of boots when doing Maven runs and actually made a nice chunk of profit. It was selling for like 4x at the very start. And usually at the end, you can go Aegis Aurora. And with the block and 90% res, you're pretty much unkillable. Now, I always like to know and see how popular these amulets are just to see how rare Ashes of the Star Omni is. And on this build, you can see it's only 10%. Not really sure if it is actually the most number one amulet used, but we can see that Ashes of the Star, very, very uncommon on this build. Next up, we have everyone's bossing favorite, Seismic Trap. This was actually the number one build on like day one and two when I checked it. And this build is really, really diverse in that there's a lot of different ways to play it, right? There's Fizz Brutality crit that I found. There's also Secrets of Suffering crit with the Scepter. And then there's also Poison where you scale Dot Multi and you have full chance to Poison. So there's a lot of different ways to play Seismic. Obviously the crit variants will scale the hardest and I do think that Secrets of Suffering crit is the highest scaling with conversion. Now 87% of the people do use Cold Iron Point. Cold Iron Point, super, super good budget item. It's very, very hard to beat early on. I sold a lot of cold iron points actually. I think I had, I sold four cold iron points. It's a relatively common item, but it was sold for like 2x at the very start. And this is pretty popular due to everyone wanting a strong bossing character. Like people want to do the uber boss fights. And in fact, Jung actually killed all the uber bosses in the hardcore with explosive trap. Since trapper is just a really, really strong playstyle, you can front load your damage by stacking traps. And it also has decent recovery and everything. And the defenses are somewhat there especially with the blind note on saboteur and it's nice to know that 100 percent play rate on the saboteur and nearly 100 percent play rate on the inquisitor for righteous fire so these two builds don't really have that much diversity in the sentences you can choose right because they're just too good like inquisitor gives you a bunch of regen and saboteur literally gives you trap throw speed and trap cooldown recovery which is something that's usually pretty hard to come by and this is the number one boss service build. If you ever try to go buy a Maven boss service or anything, most of the people are playing Seismic Trap. And it's just a character that has infinite damage if you scale it. 
Now, something that's interesting to note is that you don't see Ashes of the Star or Omni here. Now, the reason being is that a plus two skill gem amulet is actually really, really close, if not better, than Ashes of the Star. And most of these people are running pretty budget builds, so they're not going to spend that much money because Ashes of the Star is actually a really, really bad upgrade or even side grade for 40x or however much it costs currently. So that's why you see no usage rate on Ashes or Omni. Now, next up, we have everyone's favorite build. In every single league in POE history, there is always going to be a minion build in the top five. It's just something that everyone always loves. Everyone loves minions like everyone loves Raymond. So it is the number one summoner build. There used to be different variants. Ray Spectre was really popular in the past, but nowadays it is all Skelly Mages. And the reason you know it's all Skelly Mages is you can see it's the Dead Reckoning Jewel, which has 99% usage rate. Now Summon Skeletons is a great all-rounder build capable of doing all the content in the game from Simulacrum to mapping to bossing. And again, it's the same thing. This build can actually get super, super tanky if you decide to slap on an Aegis Aurora and melding right but they do have max block a lot of people use Rumi's concoction now something that's interesting to note is that ashes of the star is actually very very expensive this time around and most minion builds do use ashes of the star because the quality is good and so is the plus level of gems and running more ores is always strong for minions but you can see this time around is only 11 percent. so the amulet is so expensive that this amulet, which was around like 87% usage rate last week for Summon Skeletons build, is now only 11%, which should give you a pretty good understanding of how much they actually nerfed the drop rate by. And you can see here, it's all Necromancers again. Now next up, we actually have Explosive Arrow. Explosive Arrow, this was the number one build, I think, last league. Explosive Arrow was super, super common, mostly due to not many people playing it in the past, and it was kind of the new shiny thing. But the shine is kind of worn off, so it's actually not as popular. Because last time, I think at this point in the league, it was like 19%, and this time it's 9%. But as you can see, most people are still playing Elementalist, and Champion is there for the people who want to be tankier. Now, last time around, Ashes of the Star was kind of common, but there are very good rare options, and it's very comparable. And you can get plus two skill gems with dot multi with life on it, which actually ends up being better than Ashes of the Star in some cases. So you can see here, for most builds that have amulet options that are comparable, there's almost no usage rate on Ashes of the Star because there's no point in spending that much money on, on an upgrade that's not really that crazy. And the build is definitely less popular due to, it, due to it not being new, but it's still very, very strong and tons of people still want to play it. Now lastly... We have Lightning Strike. Now, Lightning Strike is probably the build that has the most diversity in classes. This one has Explosive Feral, Elementalist, and Champion. And this one has Champion, Raider, and Berserker. Now, Champion is actually the highest. Now, I know Raider was the highest on like the first two days. Now, I have the same theory as with Righteous Fire in that tankiness matters a lot because more tanky means more people are higher up on the ladder, means more people get indexed. So some of these numbers are obviously not exactly fully representative so champion is the highest and 29 percent actually end up using omni now this is by far the highest out of all of the classes of the top five league starters for the chase amulets now which is omni and ashes of the star and the reason being is that omni gives so much more benefit for lightning strike compared to explosive arrow summon skeletons righteous fire and seismic trap Omni is completely build defining. It gives you like 2.5 times damage while giving you all the resist you need for your build. So mandatory item. And that's why it's at 29%. Eventually this number should be going to 89, 80, 90%. Now Perseverance is the most common unique actually at 56%. Being that champions actually use it to scale damage. Now even on my Berserker, I was using Perseverance. And Perseverance with around 30 to 40k armor and evasion pretty much gives you, I think, like 200% attack damage or something, or something absurdly high, maybe a little bit less, making it pretty much better than any Stygian you could use. Another big thing is that it also gives you Onslaught while fortified, so it provides you pretty much perma Onslaught while bossing. Now, something that a lot of people ask me is, can they use the interrogation on Champion? Now, the answer to this is that you can use it, and it's probably not a bad option for increasing your damage early on, but later on, Champion has a lot easier access to maximum crit compared to Berserker. Berserker does have this node here that actually kind of messes it up. 
which is Blitz. And Blitz makes it so that you lose critical strike chance per Blitz charge. So you actually have negative 160% crit chance. So that's why most of the people who do use interrogation are Berserkers. So Lightning Strike, very, very good and has a pretty good diversity. And nice to see that there's a new unique that people are finding out that is actually super, super OP. Now, what do I actually think about all this meta? I do think that we are in a very, very diverse meta. It's super, super cool to see all these different skills have good play rate, be pretty viable. The only thing about that is that these are all the same skills. These are ev all the same skills as the last meta. So I could kind of see GGG deciding that, oh, there's pretty good diversity. Let's keep it around and see how it goes. But what it goes is that people are still going to use all the same skills. But Poison's Concoction is probably the biggest surprise for me. And Poison's Concoction, I did think, was a pretty good league starter, but it never really got that popular. I do think that there is a huge stigma surrounding Poison's Concoction where the single target is just really, really bad. So if a lot of people think the single target is bad and then you release an expansion with new uber bosses, it leads to Poison's Concoction never really being played. I think Poison's Concoction was actually at 2% play rate. And... YouTube content creators really do shape the meta. I do think that if you make a video that catches on and is like the number one video in terms of views, most people are going to play that build. So when Zizera releases this video in conjunction with Pox, that puts the smoothest mapping build, Righteous Fire Inquisitor, and the build has great play style, great defenses, and Pox made an absolutely amazing guide for how to set up the character, you're going to get results where the skill where a skill could be pretty much propelled into the stratosphere from just one video or a really good guy. That's the same thing for Tornado Shot Omni last week. Now, I do think if GGG buffed the underutilized skills, we would actually have a wide variety of skills. So if they took the lowest usage rate of skills and buffed them, then I do think that we will have a very, very good diverse meta. I do think that Omni and Ashes of the Star unlocks a lot of builds. And even if they're super, super expensive, I don't think that they should be removed. And one thing to note is that these skills right now that are at the top will probably not be at the top for long. Seismic and Explosive Arrow will always fall off, guaranteed. A Spark for Aura Stackers, a Tornado Shot for Omni, and Cyclone for Cast on Crit, Ice Nova, Ice Spear, and Forbidden Right will all go to the top. In the end, people always re-roll skills that they enjoy and that are fun once they finish their league starter and those are almost always going to be spark tornado shot and cast on crit but thanks for watching everyone i hope ggg does this and buffs the skills like frost blades i'm looking at you but i hope you find more mage bloods exalts and mirrors than me and see you next time bye